Hello and welcome to my first video about Super Circuit Maker. This is a mod that basically transforms redstone systems into tiny redstone systems so you can fit them on a small circuit like this. Um, it's quite similar to redstone in many ways but it also adds a lot of neat features so uh, it kind of enhance the, uh, the redstone system. You can treat it as an analog system as normal redstone is or you can treat it as a digital system with the logic gates and uh, true or false conditions. But first uh, we will talk about the tools and I will go through the basic stuff, I will not go through this uh, advanced circuits like these, but I will go through the basics that you need to get started and how some of the most critical items work. And then you will be able to find more videos in the playlist and also check the video description for more information. I always try to put a lot of information there. It's a quite large mod, in, perhaps not in items, but in function. And I can't cover everything in this video, so probably there will be several videos, but some of them will only cover how to implement certain objects, and some will cover how they just work. Okay, let's get started with the tools and everything you need. The first tool you will need is the screwdriver. Lapis and iron will give you this, so I will already have one. This is needed for, well, you need it all the time. You need it to rotate, uh, change modes like this. You need it to change the connections. You need it, well, you will need it to change settings. So make one directly and along with it, make yourself a magnificent magnifying monocle. When it's placed in your head slot, then you can press Z to zoom in. This is very useful when you're going into edit mode and try to, well, do your stuff on a circuit because, well, it really helps. It can be tricky to do it from top like this on a distance. Second, the, world, the first and the second item that you will need is tiny piles of redstone, just from redstone, and redstone circuits from stone slabs. The circuits can be placed on the floor like these, on the wall and in the ceiling, and well, it just works exactly the same way, so do it as you need to. And then you will probably need a few of these for tools and other things. One redstone circuit to eight tiny plates. So let's get started with only this. If you take a tile, tiny pile of redstone and just place it on a board like this, you can hold and drag, not too fast, but perhaps like this. And, well, this isn't really a circuit, it doesn't do anything, but use your imagination and your screwdriver to make it do stuff. For example, here, if you want the input signal to go in two directions, then you need the screwdriver to make it so. So if we just turn it on like this, nothing will happen, because you need to set inputs and outputs. Input puts, you shift right click like this, and you get a flat input like this. And if you do an output, it looks like that. And that's a normal right click. So now, oh, forgot this one. Now we're getting the signal passed through, all right? If you change this to be like that, like an input, then it works like a diode if you're familiar with electronics. So that means that the signal from here 
must be in that mode. And now it can insert from here. If I, if I do like this, then we'll have input from here or input from here. Basically, this is an OR gate. Like that. So your first gate or your first circuit, very much the same thing right now. So let's move on. Uh, there are a lot of other stuff we can do. For example, we can place things on these. You can, will often use these things. Uh, you have the uh, lever like this and turn it on. And uh, you will often use the redstone torch as well. It works in a similar way as a normal block on a redstone, like, like this one. See, it's very much the same thing. So we're getting an output signal if we have no input signal. But if we turn on an input signal, then we will have no output signal. So this is also used to make, well, this is basically a NOT gate, if we were <laughs> NOR gate, like this. So remember this when we move along in this tutorial, there is a lot to go through. But before we actually do that, let's take one step back to the tools, because there are a few more things that I will use already now in the beginning and I don't think there are any other tools so basically only the ones in this area. First one, multimeter. This is very useful for debugging or for actually when you're creating your designs. So tiny plates, glass and some redstone and a button. And this one it makes pretty much what you would suspect. Um, it measures your power level on these circuits. So if you turn this one on, then we have power level 255 here, but nothing here. If we turn this on, we have 255 here. And if we turn both off, then we have zero here and 255 here. So I actually have a small setup here to demonstrate this. Right now we have zero everywhere. But if we turn this on, then we will have redstone power 15 here and all the way down to 1 and then 0. And these translates into power levels on the redstone circuits. So multiply your input redstone power with 17. 15 times 17 is 255. Here, 14 times 17 is 238. So that, then you will get your different inputs depending on the redstone power. But then there's one major difference. Here we have 187 as input. If we go all the way down here and measure from the redstone power 1, we will have power level 17. But here we will still have 187 as we had over here because you have no signal loss over distance with the power system in, in Super Circuit Maker. Also good to remember and very useful of course. Next item is the squeegee. What this does is that it will clear out your circuit and if you want to start over from scratch. So shift, right click and all the stuff that was on are now in your inventory. And you must know this because if you think that it that, that they will um, be dropped when you break it, well, it won't happen. Now I'm creative mode, so let's jump into survival mode. If you break it, you will simply pick it up and when placed back down again, your, your drawings, your, your circuit is still intact. And this will be very useful when we're going into circuits on circuits. And I will do that 
in just a few more, in just two minutes, I think. Next item, the pallet. Tiny plates and a stone. You combine this with a brush, wool and some wood. This will give you the pallet and brush. This one is equipped in your shield slot and then you have it in your left arm like this. And this makes it possible to change colors. So hold your Alt key and then you just point at what color you want and release your Alt key. And now you have white, orange, and they will not connect unless you tell them to like this. Or you can perhaps do like this. And this means that if gray is turned on, then orange will be on. But if orange is turned on, well, gray will not be turned on. So we can demonstrate this very easily by doing this. Set the lever here. And we'll take out the multimeter. So 255 here now. And zero now. But as you could see, 255 and zero. If you do the opposite, we have 255. Oh. Now we have 255 here and here, even though this is turned off. All right, so colors are very useful. You will need this tool as well, so make it from the beginning. Now let's go into circuits on circuits, because if we take a look at this small one, then you can see we have gray coming from here. It's turned off. Let me remove this one because it's in the way. And this one is zero as well. And well, I can always do like this and that will flip the redstone torch. But if I, if I don't, well, I Ah, I could go around like this, easier if I'm in the correct mode. I could do like this and then simply, well, but it's not really that fun. It would be better to go straight through. So let me actually, yeah, let me introduce one more item before we continue. So this one is a tiny bundled wire, wool string and some redstone, uh, tiny piles of redstone. This works as, well, you can call it a bus, like this. So this means that we have all the colors in here. And if we are entering with orange on this side, well, orange will come out here. And if we do the same thing with gray, it will just work. So this is one way to do it. But I thought that we could introduce and demonstrate the circuits on circuits. I should have used a squiggy instead. All right. So let's say we have the gray input from here. And we have the orange input from here. We set them as inputs, this one as an output, and a tiny bundled wire in the middle. Perhaps a bad example because it's not very useful, but it will be actually, it will just show me, show you the meaning of uh, the circuits on circuits. So I picked it up and I place it down again. Now, what I have to do is I need to set this as an out, as an input to this side as an input here. And now when I flip these levers, they will work exactly as it did before, but we're doing the, uh, the connection inside this circuit. Very neat. And this, com this uh, simple is not very common. You will most of the time do it more complex when you place down circuits on circuits, but I will cover this in different videos. I'll just introduce the concept here 
and uh, please refer to the other videos in the playlist for more useful examples. Okay, let's move on with a few more items before we call it a day. Um, another thing that's very useful when you're doing your debugging is to take a tiny pile of glowstone from glowstone and combine it with a tiny pile of redstone. This will give you glowing redstone. And what it does is that it will, if you turn everything off here, and we exchange this one with glowing instead. Well, it will glow when it's turned on, it has, and this one is not turned on, this is normal redstone. So it's quite convenient when you're doing complex circuits and you, you're lost in, like you are on this one. It can be very convenient to see what parts are lit up and which ones are turned off. So good to remember, I'll try to use it in my, vi in my tutorial videos, but sometimes I might forget. So please forgive me for that. All right. Um, Two more items that are very useful. Uh, perhaps the first one is not as useful as the second one, but let's go through it anyway. So take a map, or some redstone and rose red, and this will give you the red print. Shift right click on the redstone circuit like that. And you can see that we got some white printing on the red print. And then right click on this one and if we have cut and paste basically. So if we don't want to pick it up we just want to take everything and move it and then continue working here or temporarily remove it, whichever you want. Use the red print. Next one is the blueprint and this is very useful when you want to share your work or save your work. Lapis and a map and you can do well let me demonstrate shift right click like this and you can see that we have a print here and if you have all the items in your inventory now I'm creative mode so not a good example but when you do have your items in your inventory just right click on another circuit and you have pasted it here and we can do the same thing over and over again, as long as you have all the items in your inventory. But this, that's not all you can, uh, well, you can name it. For example, this one, the final one that I did. Uh, let's see, what was it? Ah, I don't remember. Anyway, let's say you made a cool one and this is like a super duper circuit. Perfect. There you have it named and everything. Like I have on this one, the compact seven segment display. It looks like this and it works just fine. And let's say, I won't go through it. I already have a video going through this in the video, in the playlist. But let's say I wanna share this. So this compact seven segment display, take your console and write SCM export. This will create a link to GitHub. And if I copy this, copy to clipboard, this link is in the video description if you want to use it. And now we can use it everywhere. And how do you use it or how do you get it? Well, simply have an unused blueprint like this. And you write SCM import and the very same link that you created before. This will print the blueprint on a circuit and now I can paste it again. If you have all the items in your inventory, of course. So very useful, very useful, extremely useful actually. And I think that's a wrapping up point for this first video. So I've gone through all the items that you need the, to get started, all the tools, 
how to do basic circuits, place them on other circuits and uh, how to share your designs and how the power system works. Pretty much enough for now. In the next video I'll go through some more items, uh, not all perhaps but at least a few more and I'll also go through some of the basic gates and, uh, and latches that are good to use. So a few more examples perhaps um, and then we'll see if I've covered everything. But anyway you'll find more info in the description and in the playlist. So thanks for watching and I hope you see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.